Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. I'm your co-host, Rich Gear. You almost forgot for a second, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I had to get him for that. Well, listen, Doug, I'm pretty excited about the stuff we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, because it's been bandied about in creationist as well as evolutionary circles for quite a while. And uh, there seems to be more and more information. And it's really about the supposed similarities between apes and humans which evolutionists like to bring out from time to time, proving that we have evolved from ape-like hominids, really apes and stuff like that. But creationists have done some yeoman's work and they've come up with some uh, really good answers and, and responses to it. And uh, it's almost like you told me there's, there's 12, there's t like 12 points, your 12 major things that right, yeah. kind of show some differences. He's gonna go through these, because, uh, you know, we're going to go the, uh, rather quickly here. Yeah, go ahead, because... There's a, a, there's a book that was written by uh, Daniel Biddle, uh, David Bisbee, and Jerry Bergman. Yep. And it's called Debunking Human Evolution Taught in Our Public Schools. Basically, I'm going to be covering chapter one in this book today, because it's, uh, um, it's showing... I didn't real, really realize how many differences there are uh, no, we've kind of glossed over them. You yeah, know. and one of the uh, real lies that have been told is that uh, apes and uh, chimps and humans are 98% similar. That's the big and one. We, we, we covered yeah. that last week. Yeah. But the, this time we're going to just uh, go more into the morphology, uh, the, the different characteristics of, of apes and humans, and mm -hmm. uh, what uh, humans have that apes don't, what apes have that humans don't, and uh, and just compare those differences and uh, why they are design features rather than the, something that uh, was really uh, evolution was responsible right, for. Right, right, yeah. Uh, and I think what we need to do is talk, talk about what the Bible says about apes and humans. We'll get started from the biblical <coughs> perspective. Right. That's really a good way to start. And then we'll get into some of the science later on. Is that what you want to do? Is that what you want to do? All right, Doug, let's go for it. Uh, humans were created male and female at the beginning of creation. And this is something that uh, uh, the Bible talks about uh, in, in Genesis. It says, uh, uh, you know, that they were we created male and feel, female, and it's from the beginning. And so there was no uh, long periods of time that that was involved. Correct. In, yeah. In, okay. uh, in in that development. I like the second point, John. Here we said, each of the humans could only reproduce after their kind. This is what makes racism so silly, Doug, is everyone is in here for whether black, white, Chinese, Oriental, it doesn't really matter. We're all able to produce humans, whatever we do. But with an ape, no, nothing nothing can come out of it. Apes have to, have to reproduce with apes, right. as well as humans with humans. There's no crossover. There's no linkage in between that you can even imagine that it would be, be through there. So, you know. And there are millions of apes and billions of humans, but there are zero transitions. Oh, now, that's the, probably the coup de grace. <laughs> and what you have are uh, some, uh, you have, and we'll probably talk about this next week, is, uh, is the exceptions where uh, you have some, uh, uh, some of these fossils that are found, you know, the... Yeah, uh, there's, the no living, there's no living transitions. Right. You have either apes or humans, and there are things that are purported to be transitions only in the fossil record where you can kind of make up a lot of stuff, okay? Right. And I mean, there's some real bones, but what they're making their conclusions based upon them, with their, there's no fleshy material to look at it. There's no mm -hmm. no understanding of their of their of what they really uh, who what they would have reproduced with as, as far as as far as any kind of transitionary thing. And of course, there's no real there's no real vestige or, or things that exist today that would show the, of this linkage either. So anyway, the humans were the only creation. Made in God's image. Uh, apes weren't made in God's image. No, no. And uh, we are made moral with a conscience, with language, uh, and we were given dominion over all, all the other creatures. And we will even judge the world and uh, and even the angels. And God breathed His Spirit into human beings. Mm -hmm. And so these, this is what the Bible says about uh, uh, human beings. And there's. Uh, the design features that uh, humans have that apes don't share. We have advanced speech, we have uh, the use of mathematics, music, worship, holding ceremonies, prayer, creativity, and love. All these are uh, things that uh, uh, human beings have that uh, 
uh, apes don't have. I think it's why they spent a lot of time, Doug, trying to show uh, rudimentary speech in, in lower animals to try to prove that we're nothing more but an, a higher animal. They just don't have abstract reasoning that, that we yeah, do. Yeah, some, There's nothing some like parrots, that. Uh, and we'll get into this, that have yeah, they can mimic. more uh, language skills than apes do. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, but uh, here's the design difference, number one, is that uh, uh, it's, it's the soul of man. And uh, uh, here's what the God instilled within, uh, with, with us uh, in his design about our soul. We have self-awareness, we have uh, different mental states, uh, beliefs, intentions, de desires, we have knowledge, and in the heart, we have appreciation, gratitude, and joy. And of course, we use heart. We're dealing with soul here. We're not dealing with the physical organ of the heart necessarily. Right, right. That's a that's a thing we've we we carried on from earlier writings and things. But it's, but it's meant to be the, yeah the heart, the the emotional, uh, you know yeah the right. things that we can appreciate and joyfulness and, and yeah you said gratitude yeah that's that, those are things we we can we can express. I don't see that so much in the lower animals. We like to anthropomorphize a lot of like dogs oh, yeah. and cats, and we think they're grateful. All they're thinking really about is who's going to be, who's going to take care of my next meal. Right. You yeah. know, pretty much. You know, and if I got a warm place to stay in the winter time, I'm good enough. You know. Um, anyway, so Doug, what else we got? Well, we have a will, and the, and yes. that's defined as the power to choose. We have discipline. We have uh, uh, ten. We have uh, temperance, and we have creativity, and we have pers perseverance. These are examples of what uh, we have in, in the will. This is something that, um, in animals, most of this is taken care of by instinct. It's yeah. not uh, something that uh, is, uh, in our, our case, we have power to choose, and we have power to uh, you know, make up our minds about. Remember when I was younger? I remember we were talking about instincts when, we were, when I was in school a year many, many moons ago, and they talked about the only real instinct that humans seem to have, if it is an instinct, no, but it's that that, that instinct for self-preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else is really based upon conscience, choice, uh, morality. Doug, if you think about it, morality doesn't really make sense uh, in a pure purely mechanistic environment. It may really, um, you know, it just doesn't really, altruism either, it doesn't really make make any sense. Why would you self-sacrifice yourself? You know, we have this, if we have this instinct for self-preservation, how is it that many people are giving their lives up mm -hmm. for their children or a friend or a cause even, uh, they will give their life up? That's something that's not natural. That's something that's mm -hmm. supernatural. It's been well, been there are also a lot of uh, things that are automatic processes with your body, you know, like uh, uh, like breathing, for example. Sure. You know? Auto yeah, autonomic uh, responses or auto what are the, yeah, involuntary involuntary right. response in like yeah, breathing. Uh, there's the thing, that's the you don't have to think. think. You, know, you, yeah. can, you can think about breathing. You know, you, you have, and you make a quick point that dogs might be altruistic and then they rescue their master and might get killed in a, in a, but I don't think they do it in the sense that a human being in advance knows he's going to die. Right. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's wrong, but I don't think that's, you know, dogs might do it because they, they quote, love their master in a certain sense. He takes care of them or he or she takes care of them. Um, but it's the human will voluntarily give them himself with, with not even an instinctual, like a, like a, like a something at the last minute, they will, I think my favorite thing is the, the guy who gives up his life in that book, The Tale of Two Cities. It's mm -hmm. a far, far better thing I do. And the guy, he's a twin with another mm -hmm. guy. He gives his, he gives his life because he's been nothing but a crook and a bum his whole life, basically, a ne'er-do-well. But this, he looks like this royal guy, and he goes to the gallows in place of him. And uh, why would you somebody do something that? There's, a, there's something, there's a higher state of knowledge mm -hmm. that only those who've been... been uh, only human beings have that really propensity to do that. So yeah, we have anyway, a conscience. Yeah, and I think that's yeah, the, yeah it gets down to that. awareness of morality and the right and wrong, and uh, you know everybody knows what a conscience is, but uh, I don't think uh, it's sort of hard to describe. You know how uh, where it comes from, or, or to put it in a test tube, or 
You can't put it in a test tube, but it's real nonetheless. We know it's there, you know? Those, those things that say, yes, I should do that, no, I, I shouldn't do that, you know? So, Doug, we, now we're going to get a little bit more into the mechanics, huh? Right. Well, let's uh, talk about the morphology of the skull of the ape and the humans. And uh, the cranial cap capacity of, uh, of, uh, of a human is three times the size of, of an ape. The, the, the slope of the face is yeah. what it's talking about. It, it, uh, we're basically up and down the straight, straight face. Interesting, Doug, uh, uh, that brings me up, but just a, a side note, uh, when Jack Quoz's book came out mm -hmm. and he was studying the Neanderthals, which are supposedly a link between, you know, apes and humans, and then he noticed that the skull was, was actually reconstructed wrong. He was an orthodontist, and he had the jaw was thrown out 30 mm -hmm. degrees too far out, and where it needs to go, and it wouldn't even fit correctly. And then mm -hmm. when you get it, you get basically the more up and down slope that you do with modern day humans. You have some other differences yeah. in the Neanderthal skulls. But it's uh, ironic yeah. you mentioned Jack Rozo because he, he just passed away this week. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's sad. He yeah. did, oh man, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd not he heard he that. He was fighting cancer and uh, oh. I guess he was in remission, but then uh, this happened suddenly. Came back, oh man, that's one of the best books. It only came out 10 years, it maybe was it ten years ago, maybe or so? Maybe, uh, boy. It's been a while, but uh, ah. uh, and the humans, the the face and the jaws do not protrude out. You know, right. the jaws and the eye sockets are different. Uh, the location of the uh, foramen magnum. Okay, <laughs> and what that is, it's the hole. Really the, it's a hole for the spine. That's where oh, goes. yeah. Uh, and it shifted forward on, it, on an ape, isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it f no, our, our head, I mean, head, isn't the head like... The head is shifted forward. Forward, yes. That's what whereas mean. we're more centrally located. Yeah. With, uh, and the ape is sort of in the back. Yeah. Uh, where, where it connects. The muscles uh, in the skull are, are much different. And the mastoid process is different. Uh, the premaxilla is the whole... The bone plate for incisor teeth. The angle of the face is different. The chin and the hyoid bone. Uh, it's a U-shaped bone above the, the larynx, and that's what the, the causes us to, to talk. Be able to talk, yeah. Design number three is the brain. The brain weight is uh, 1,378 grams versus 399 grams. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about the human skull is we are able to be fully human with an order of, of three times. We can go from like 750 or 800 cc's all the way to 2100 and still be fully human. No other animal has that, has that ability. It's really not, it, 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 the, the point is, there is a point where the size does matter. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. And the, the, it, it, there's no way you can make a, a 399 gram you know, brain have enough organizational things to be able to do what a human does. But it's amazing that uh, I think it was Rudolf Virchow, kind of very mm -hmm. famous guy from the 1900s, uh, and he had a fairly small cranial, but his brain was, he was a genius. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's the way it's organized. It's another thing, the, the way the brain is, the convolutions and stuff are just incredible. But, and Virchow was you know, uh, pretty much uh, on our side. Yeah, he was. Creation. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, disputed the Neanderthal. Uh, Even back then. back then, he was yeah. in the 1880s or so, you know, 18, right. yeah, that time period. So uh, DNA methylation, what that is, is that this is the capacity in the uh, brain, the DNA in the brain to uh, 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 switch uh, its function based upon the, the need of the time. And the, this is a new science that they're finding out. Well, what is this? I'm not, I'm not familiar with this. Uh, they call it epigenetics. Oh, I've heard of that. And yeah. uh, what it is is that uh, there's uh, uh, just a, uh, it's like a, a computer program that uh, sort of uh, figures out what's going on and then uh, alters its uh, code in order to uh, take care of a really? situation. And uh, so the brain chemistry is different uh, uh, in terms of uh, humans and apes. It's a, more, a whole lot more complex okay. than, than humans. The temporal cortex is much lar larger. The cerebellum is three times larger. Wow. The neocortex is a different, it's really a different brain. 
uh, there's a 30 to 1 ratio uh, apes gray matter to med medulla, and then 60 to 1 uh, ratio is in humans. Well, Andrew, you said the cerebe cerebellum three times larger. <coughs> That's what cerebellum is what they think a lot of it's where you get your memory and right. conscience and uh, abstract thinking and all. I mean, the, the cerebrum, no, you know, no, I said, wait, where am I thinking the cerebrum? No, the cerebrum is that part. I guess the cerebellum is the, that's the, isn't that, mo that's motor, is that motor skills? Yeah, no, that's more of the mo motor, motor skills, stuff, yeah. yeah. I got that cross cerebrum. Yeah, do they, do, do the apes even have a cerebrum? Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah, do they? I wonder what it is, uh, but it's much smaller. Much yeah. a little, yeah, because it really is huge in humans, okay? Differences in spindle cells and insula. Uh, there's a, uh, for insula, there's 46 to 1 ratios. What, what, what is an insula? I mean, I'm glad you asked that because I don't know. He has no idea. What? I'm, I'm, I'm right, let me look it up here. I have to look it up, what an insula is. You know? Because mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that term at all. all right. And I've done a lot of reading on the brain over the last few years because uh, of my large life situation, trying to figure mm -hmm. out things with brain damage and brain fix, but, so, but I'm not familiar with that term. Uh, and this is a part of the brain that uh, uh, takes in information from the skin. <coughs> you know, like feeling, touch. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, um, so in other words, you smack an ape, they don't feel it as much as we do. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're a little more thin-skinned than they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then the design number four is in the ears. So we, we have uh, semicircular canals and so do apes, but they're, they're totally different because of the different types of balance that they need. Ah, uh, yeah. And it matches the skull size, you know, the, um, and so the, uh, and the, then the, the face is different. And like we talked about that. The, the, if you look, you stand up and look, then look down at the ground, uh, the the ch chimps would see their face, but we, we, we would see the ground because uh, we're up and down, whereas they're sloped out. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay. And then the other thing that's different about the face is uh, that we have a whole lot more uh, muscles in the face to, so we can make facial expressions. Yeah. Um, apparently, uh, apes and chimps only have just a few, whereas we... Uh, Kids learn early about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember reading about uh, uh, somebody who uh, was blind from birth, but then they had an operation to uh, see, uh, to uh, fix their eyes so they could see. Really? And okay. so, uh, so they were healed, their eyes were healed, and they said that the first thing that they noticed about other people when they first saw them first is that uh, you know, they have, uh, they don't have one face, they have thousands of faces because of the different expressions. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. And they, you know, that's something that the people really didn't... Uh, well, that's the thing, yeah, body language is all about that, you know, right. facial expressions, nuances, yeah. yeah. The anyway. facial muscles, that in, uh, in humans, there are 50 of them, and chimps have three facial muscles. <laughs> wow, where are those other, where are those other uh, you know, 47 evolved from, Doug? Yeah, well... Okay, you know, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, it's a, all a situation where you have to uh, uh, get this information from some place. Uh, it screams designer, you know. It's yeah. Something that, uh, and to uh, say that uh, the humans and apes are, are so similar that uh, they should uh, uh, have the same uh, rights that humans have. Yeah, know? that's the big thing, yeah. Yeah, we should elect them to Congress and then the, well, at least... Well, some people say that's what we have done, but that's another story. Yeah, but uh, you know, at least a, a random vote would be worse than one that's... Uh, uh, no worse than one that's totally pernicious. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so Doug, and you said that, and and the, it's the brain that controls the, the muscle function of these, right? And and that's another reason you think of the the brain organization and size. Each uh, uh, each of the muscles uh, would have uh, uh, the brain capacity and, to, and the connections to uh, to uh, operate those muscles. Okay, all right. Then the then the spine is different. Uh, in chimps, the spine is bow-shaped, whereas uh, in humans, we have a double curve. Yes, that's right, yeah, the S-curve. And, uh, yeah. uh, and the chimps, we have one more thoracic 
vertebra, but in one less ver lumbar vertebra. And so, uh, is it they're, they're, they're designed, designed to, uh, to walk on all fours. Oh yeah, we walk upright, yeah, right. okay. And then the hands of the chimps are made for knuckle walking, and then the humans are more mobile and flexible. Apes, the hand bones and finger bones are curved. It's made for swinging in the trees, whereas uh, in humans, the thumbs are longer and stronger. And then in apes, the, the thumbs are sort of set back. Uh, yeah, they're kind of down here. Way, yeah. They're almost down here. And, that's, and, and then we've talked about this over the years that Doug, when we ran into the Sturkfontein caves, when they actually were able to see what the Australopithecines, hands and feet, are really like. And they're, they're basically chimp, chimp, or chimps, basically. Right. You know, uh, they're not. They're not some missing link between a human and a and a and a and a gorilla. They're just they're really apes. They're small little apes. Right. And it's interesting, Doug, because you know you still see. We've talked about this many times on the show. How the reconstructions in the museums still put human hands and feet on them. Right. I, I don't know if Michigan State has changed it over here, but I know the Chicago Museum of History. I was down there just a few years ago. It was still a human hands and feet, and those are that's wrong. You know. So yeah, those zoo has them that, that way? And that, that's something that, uh, I think that's design number you know, 10 or 11 here. So. Okay, oh, we, we haven't got there. Okay. We're on design, we're on design number, number 9. nine. Okay. There's the hips and the pelvis. Uh, and the humans, the, the, uh, we walk upright, of course. That's obvious, And yeah. uh, the apes, they walk, uh, uh, sometimes they walk upright, but they're not very, very long. No, and when they do, they're kind of, they're kind of <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of, Loping a little bit, right. and then they get back down there on their on their longer arms. Yeah. yeah. The, in humans, the, the pelvic bones are curved, and the apes are flat, and they have longer. The apes have longer pelvic bones than we do. Yes, right. And that's because they're they're more uh, uh, designed to walk on all fours. The legs only humans uh, stand and walk on two feet. Uh, you have kangaroos who hop. Yeah, but uh, they uh, they don't uh, uh, they don't walk like humans. No, nope. and apes can't do it for for very long. And uh, walking upright has some advantages. So you freeze your hands up for use of tools. It's more efficient. You can do it faster. Uh, you can take care of babies and uh, increase. Uh, you, you have increased height because you're. Uh, uh, yeah, the, monkey, the apes get it by going up the trees. For a few <laughs> now. now the feet, there's uh, the differences. Uh, you have uh, the apes really have hands for feet, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah four sets of four sets of feet, basically. You know, humans have a large heel. They uh, uh, they're adapted for walking. They're stiff midfoot, a ducted big toe on, in line with other digits. And so, but the apes has a small heel, and uh, it's uh, adapted for uh, climbing, not walking. And uh, you have a, a flexible midfoot, and that's for it uh, has a grasping big toe. Oh yeah, they can go like this. Yeah, where we can't do that with our feet. <coughs> so, our feet are really designed for do one thing: right. hold us upright to walk on two feet. Yeah. And then the skin is different. You know, all human, non-human primates have fur. And then they have actually have fingerprints on their knuckles and on their uh, some is that right? Have, some wow! On the, on the tail. Okay. And the, the, their skin is thin all around. And then on the on the friction surfaces like their hands and mm -hmm. uh, and the fingertips, they have sweat glands. Well, I know some people sweat and get sweaty hands pretty good, but not on the tips. You know. <laughs> So if humans are 30% taller, 80% heavier, and 50% longer, and have brains 400% larger. That's quite a bit of significance. Right. Yeah. Chimps show aggression with their teeth. Can humans just smile? smile to show warmth. In fact, I understand if you smile at an ape, that's a sign that you're, you're threatening them. Right. Where us is a sign of friendly. You don't want to smile on, at a gorilla. That means they're ready to attack. You never smile at a crocodile. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's a... Mm -hmm. Certain what? Certain parrot? Oh, here we go. So yeah. certain parrots have a larger vocabulary and language skills than any ape, right. and you wouldn't consider them a missing link. Although some people do go bar, go back far enough, you know. Yeah. Humans design and use 
complex tools. No other animal really does that. They've tried to do rudimentary things with apes, but again, they're trying to prove the linkage there. You know, but you have uh, humans um, adapt to their surroundings, uh, adapt their surroundings to themselves. Uh, apes adapt to their surroundings. And humans uh, are education directed. Chimps are directed by instinct. We, we, we yeah, learn behavior is pretty much what we do. That is, that's, that's absolutely true, you know? So I'm, I'm glad I'm not a chimp, but uh, if I was a chimp, I'd be, a, a a, chimp. A, a, no, I'd be a, <laughs> a, something that God designed for, 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 that. for that particular purpose. And uh, it's uh, interesting that people uh, try to make out that uh, we are so much uh, like apes because what that really does is it robs us of the dignity and purpose that God has actually given us uh, and uh, has to told us that we have uh, as our inheritance in the Bible. And I think quite frankly Doug that was really some of the underlying if not over definitely covert reasoning for many of the early evolutionists they wanted us to be able to be able to act like animals if we wanted to and be justified say well it's just natural we're all part of the, of the same animal kingdom and uh, primarily it had to do with sexual behavior mm -hmm. but but there are other things as well and so yet they draw the line when some of these are, people start murdering people and they go well that's wrong well mm -hmm. where's that sense of morality come from chimp doesn't have it they may or may not murder but if they if it would get them ahead to do what they wanted to do they, they wouldn't wouldn't stop them it's not a matter of that it's, a, they, it's not about a conscience we have a conscience. That's a big difference, Doug. I think that whole thing, because we have a soul. We are created in the very image of God. It, male and female, he created us. Makes us unique in all of this physical creation, I think, Doug. It's quite, quite amazing. And uh, like I, we said last week, is that 98%, uh, that whole idea that we're that uh, much similar to apes, it's really a lie. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.